Hello friends and welcome back to my shop where I make things like this. So this is kind of cool because I have pen 100 here and I have pen 001. That's technically not correct because I've done a bunch of brass bolt actions in the past and I've done flux pens, but everyone kind of gets their own serial number for each line. Um, so when I change to this design, this kind of tapered clip design, um, this is called the EDC bolt and I started on 001 and we've now ended up at 100 plus units. Uh, this one's already sold, um, but it's 100 so I went a little crazy with it and uh, yeah, we'll go over the changes between the two of them because it's kind of interesting. Alrighty, here we have both pens. Um, we have obviously a little bit of a size difference between them. Um, that's just because this one was built for the full size um, Pilot G2 refill and this is for the mini G2 refill. Um, the ends and the tips are the exact same, it's just the body length that changed. Um, the main differences between both these pens, um, this one is stainless and all the blue parts are titanium, whereas this one is all titanium. Uh, the bolt action on this one is brass, uh, the bolt action on this one is titanium. Uh, basically, otherwise, the pocket clip design, everything else is pretty much the same. Stainless steel screw, stainless steel screw. Um, so we will go ahead and take these both apart. Uh, the funny thing is this one, I know I've already stolen parts out of this one, so there's some weirdness with this, but uh, the spring rate on this bolt action was significantly stronger uh, than the spring rate on these new ones, which is just super light. Um, I found that the smoother I got the action, the lighter I can make the spring and still have it feel really nice, not have it feel gritty or anything like that. And the funny thing is the action on this one and the action on this one, or so you can hear this jingling because this is loose. Um, they're very similar, um, but the funny thing is the materials make it so much harder. So it sounds so trivial, but having a brass slider inside of a stainless steel body is pretty easy to get smooth because brass is self-lubricating. Um, getting a titanium, bolt inside of a titanium body to feel smooth takes so much more work. It's so minor, but it took me so much more effort to do that. Um, this is made out of tube stock. This is made out of stainless tube. Um, so the inside didn't really have to have a lot done to it. It kind of had a texture that just lent itself well to a bolt action or to a sliding action, I should say. It was smooth enough, I should say, with the uh, brass pin. Whereas this one is made from rod. Um, so I drill out the uh, bodies on all the pens now. Uh, so this was drilled, reamed, and then polished um, to get a really smooth action. So I'm really pleased with how these are working up. Um, they come apart basically the exact same way. The tips just unscrew. Make sure they're retracted yet. Yeah. Take this one apart. That one comes out. This one comes out. And uh, This is the refill for this one. This one had just kind of a spring that I had just kicking around. Um, all the new ones come with these little titanium springs and I just anodize them just because I can, because titanium loves to be anodized. I um, mean, it's pretty tight fit. So I, to get these on and off the refills, I just spin them slightly. Which comes off quite nicely. Other than that, they basically come apart the exact same way. Um, this one, normally you wouldn't be able to pull this pin out. On this one, I can because it's, uh, it's so loose. But normally, I'll pretend that it wasn't like that. Um, to get this bolt action apart on this pen, you have to take out the screw to remove the pocket clip because when you start loosening this, it doesn't spin around. It almost does, but to make that small enough, it just got really uncomfortable on the fingers, so uh, I made the clip removable. Obviously, I'm not going to make that in one piece either, because that'd be a big billet piece, but now I'm just rambling. Um, the engraving on this pocket clip is also all kinds of wonky. Um, I did them up and down at the start, because I like that better. Um, but you can see the depth is all different. This was the first one I did, so this one's really bad. The screw comes out. This comes out. I also did uh, different machining on the inside. I tried to basically ball mill it nice and smooth. And then later I realized uh, I like the look of the nice cusp pattern that uh, kind of a heavy overstep gives you. So I changed that up. But anyways, let's say that comes out. That pin should not normally fall out. Like I said, that screw has been stolen for something else. Um, the difference on these two is the caps on the old pens all had magnets in them. And I like putting magnets in the pens. Um, I just, I don't know, I liked having a magnet on me at all times. But it proved to be uh, kind of a weak point in the design. Uh, the coating on the magnet wasn't the greatest. Um, and as I kept ordering batches of magnets, some of them had a chip and then they would be coated over that chip so then I couldn't use that magnet or they'd be, um, they wouldn't, the diameters, I mean, they're not a tolerance diameter, but the diameters would change enough that they wouldn't be a nice press fit. So. Uh, I ended up removing the magnets from all new pens and now they come sans magnet. It just didn't add enough to the, it, it didn't add enough to the design for me to want to keep it. Um, all the holes for these pocket clips on the old pens, every one of them was hand tapped. Um, and hand tapping titanium is a exercise in patience. Um, I broke so many taps. I have scrapped so many of these tips or these uh, ends. It would uh, it'd make your head spin. 
I then went to form tapping on the mill, which helped out significantly. I mean, I was hand tapping on the mill, so it was nice and stable. Um, form tapping on the mill helped a bit, um, but now I thread mill all the holes, and that is so much nicer. Plus, it lets me do things uh, that I couldn't normally do. So, anyways, what you would normally do is you would then reach in with this tool, and you would loosen. There's a grub screw that pinches this pin, and then this pin would come out, and then the bolt action would slide out the back. And I put a big flat on this to help with indexing when you put it back together. Um, it also solved for any air exchange issues, which I'll talk about on this pen. And uh, it also gave me a spot to uh, do some engravings on it if I wanted to do that. There's a big bang to my right. I don't know what it is. Some sort of creature trying to get into the garage. So yeah, this is the screw. I stole this screw, obviously, for one of my other pens. I must have been playing with it. So it's way too small to grab this pin, but that's basically how the design on this one worked. This pin just went in, and it got pinched by the screw. That actually works out really well. I, I enjoyed that design. That worked out well. But once I was able to do thread milling, I could do fun stuff by having this screw just unthread. I, you don't need tools to take anything apart. Well, technically you need a tool to get this apart, but I haven't figured out a way to get that toolless yet. Maybe in time. Anyways, this uh, body finish was an acid finish. Um, I just basically dunked this in acid to kind of give it a just a slightly frosted appearance. Came out okay. I didn't do too many of these um, just because that finish is not terribly um, strong. And it also etches on the inside of the body, which isn't ideal. Um, in this case it worked great because that brass just, it, it's so self-lubricating it worked fine, but uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do too many of these. Tumbled a ton of them and did a few polished ones. Let's take apart this one. Uh, this one I'm going to ship to the customer and I've already polished this screw and I don't want to raise any kind of, or potentially raise any edges or make any scratches on the screw, so I'm not going to take that screw out. But what we can do on this one, since it's designed differently, is this just unscrews. Just snug this up significantly, so that just doot, 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 doot. The thumb stud off. Now the whole bolt action assembly can come out the front of the pen. And I do put a very light coating of Teflon lubricant on these, a dry Teflon lube, so if there's some weird kind of mottling on the surface, that's probably what it's from. Um, on the back of this bolt action, we'll do the uh, artificial zoom here. You can see there's a little air groove, and I actually had to add that because I found that on the back side of the pen here, um, between the cap and the, uh, well, the top of the bolt action, um, it would slightly trap air uh, when I cycled it to the retracted position and it would just instead of giving you a nice crisp click it would kind of go foom, click. Um, so by putting this little slot in the back side uh, it just lets the air slide past nice and quickly and you get a nice crisp action uh, these holes um, since I'm able to thread mill now they're all thread milled to fit this little thumb stud which just screw ah, which just screws in it's hard to do this through camera in reverse I'm seeing the mirrored image, so. Yeah, I'm very pleased with that. There's also a counterbore in here, so when this thumb stud screws in place, it hits the counterbore. Lots of little tiny details that are kind of more visible under magnification than just bigification. Let's square us up again here. There are some weird sounds going on out there. The other difference between these two pens, um, the bolt action on this one was just cut in and there's no chamfer, which worked okay because I tumbled a lot of these, so these, this edge got slightly rounded over by uh, just the tumbling process. All the new pens have a chamfer around this, um, which also required a little bit tighter of a fourth axis machining because doing a chamfer, it's very visible to see where your chamfer is off because um, just a minor height change uh, makes that angle why wildly, wildly different. Um, but it also lets me do polished finishes and still have a really nice smooth surface where your thumb is, you know, sliding past your or your fingers if you're a weirdo, you know, maybe you cycle it like this, maybe you cycle with your pinky, I don't know. Um, but yeah, having the chamfers there is much nicer. And the inside of these bodies is just so much more polished compared to uh, these ones. I mean, it has to be to make that action work, but yeah. Quite pleased with that. All right, so let's put these back together. Oh, first of all, the springs. I love, I love these little springs. Uh, so these are titanium springs I make now. Whoa, can I even focus on this? Of course I can, it's manual. Um, so this is a fairly tight fit, so to get this back on, I just basically uh, backwards, forward, there we go. So I just spin it, just so it grips on the end of the refill. And I find these refills are made to actually have pretty insane tolerance. Um, uh, not these ones in specific, but uh, some of the other ones have an ISO tolerance, and uh, yeah, they, they hold a... Uh, out of the hundreds and hundreds of refills I buy, um, they just, they fit really nice. So anyways, they all come with titanium springs now, because I can. So let's put this back together. So this little thumb stud, or, uh, sorry, bolt slider, mixing, wixing my words up, wixing my merds. So on one side, it's just smooth with probably some Teflon goo on it. Um, and on the back side, there's a little divot. And that divot goes to the back of the pen. And I try to line this up and I'll focus you again here. Or are you about, are you happy there? Something like about that. OK, 
Okay, so we'll line that up. Boop. Just push that one in. Boop, do, 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 do. Get it close. This is the hardest part because this screw is fairly tiny. But I even I Higby's, I don't know if you can see, there's probably a little bit of let's see, I doubt we're gonna see this. Yeah, you're definitely not gonna see this. Um there's a Higby on the end of this thread as well. I'm a Higby start is just the same thing that's on your uh, garden hose fittings. I just you cut the sharp part of the thread off. Just makes makes a fit up a little bit nicer. It makes it feel smoother in your hands and it helps eliminate cross threading, especially with these super fine threads. I'm like, these are all 40 threads per inch, so fairly, fairly tight. There. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. That goes in place. This cap just screws on. Boom. Let's get you nice and focused. Very nice. Quite like that. Okay, I'll quickly assemble the other one here. And another thing I forgot to mention is uh, whereas the engravings on the first ones were all on the outside of the pocket clips, the engravings on the new ones are all on the inside. I'm just a big fan of buying products that don't have their branding everywhere. Um, even a little pocket knife that I carry is just a little, uh, hold on, it's just a SOG pocket knife. Um, and they have their logo there, which is fine. I, don't, I, don't, I just, I like not displaying my logo. It's probably a horrible business decision because every photograph of these pens won't have my branding on it, but it's what I like right now. Maybe that'll change down the road, but I like the super minimalist. Plus it gives me a bunch of surfaces to get crazy with, you know, all kinds of weird designs and patterns on. I love this pen. This is a nice pen. <laughs> When I was shipping the original pens, um, they basically came in a foam carrier similar to this, but it was full size that went in the shipping box and it just held the tool, all laser cut, held the pen in place. Um, this one's designed for the minis, that's why it doesn't fit. Um, and I really like that. I, out of all the pens I've sold, I haven't had any ever damaged in shipping. I mean, I use a pretty intense shipping box, so uh, that's a uh, yeah, knock on wood, no damage as of yet. The new boxes, quite pleased with. Uh, so these are the new ones that these pens are shipping in laser cut, nothing crazy fancy, and then all the details on the back that have the serial number. This is a demo box, that's why it's serial 707. I'm not that far yet, and date, and batch, and signature, and whatnot, so yeah. Just another, I don't know, packaging has always been really important to me. Um, you just, if you just open up a pen in a bubble wrapped envelope, it just doesn't have the same feel as, like who, like presents, right? You like opening boxed presents. No one likes to open up a, well, I shouldn't say that. Maybe people like gift bags, but like a box with wrapping paper is always more fun to open. So the more boxes I can give people, the more fun it is. At least I think so anyways. As I was editing all these clips together, I realized I should probably put in my very first pen I ever made. Uh, so it wasn't a bolt action, it was this one right here. So this is the first ever pen I made. Uh, this is designed for a Zebra F701 refill, which is actually a, it's a pretty good pen if you're looking for an inexpensive everyday carry pen. That's a good one. 
Um, this is made out of uh, 01 tool steel. The whole end was just a press fit because I wasn't fancy enough to do threading on it um, to you know have it all fit up nicely that way. Uh, the back end, you just unscrewed. And the thread fit up is terrible. <laughs> and the refill went in there and it was just dead length. So it screwed and just as it screwed together, it uh, extended the pen. It took the zebra pocket clip, uh, which is no longer on it. And uh, yeah, it just always was um, in its exposed state. So it ruined so many pairs of pants, but I absolutely love this pen and I uh, carried it for months and months. And, uh, yeah, this what, it's what started this whole weird pen making journey. So yeah. I'm, uh, I'm super thankful that I decided to make one of these one day. Anyways, that's where this video ends. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.